In this video, we'll talk about how to set up a Buffalo Link Station or Terra Station NVR to work with Axis Camera Companion um, and using its one click automatic setup. So, what we have here t is a, a small network with four cameras on them, as well as a Buffalo Link Station 420 NVR product. And we have a PC running Axis Camera Companion. Uh, the first thing to do to, to set this up is to ensure that your network is, is configured properly. Cables are plugged into the right spot. And I'll try and explain what we have here. Uh, this is just a traditional router, sort of a, a small office type router. Uh, it's got wireless capability, which we're not going to use. But uh, um, this is where DHCP is going to be provided. Your internet connection will be plugged into this via modem, or perhaps this, is, uh, this has a built-in modem. Uh, so this is sort of the start of the network, and everything needs to ultimately be uh, connected, not necessarily directly to this, um, and I'll explain how the rest of the components fit in. Um, first, we have the PC. It's plugged in to the back of the router just because uh, there's open ports back there. I also have my link station plugged into the back of the router, although it could be plugged into a switch as well. Uh, and then I have my PoE switch. Since I'm using PoE cameras, I don't have uh, power adapters for them. I have to use a PoE switch. I happen to be using the one non-uplink PoE port to be connecting to the switch. So even though the PC and the uh, an NVR product uh, aren't directly connected to the switch, because this uplink port is connected into the router uh, and the PC and the NVR are connected into the router, they can all see each other. Uh, and then these four uh, Ethernet cables are the PoE plugs, uh, the cables that go directly into the four cameras I'm using. These happen to be Axis M1054 cameras real easy, small, uh, so it's good for this demo. Um, so what I've done is turned everything on, including the, the link station. Uh, at the back of the link station, there's a switch for on and off. Uh, it's been turned on. Uh, and these products are all in their default settings. Uh, so the cameras have been completely reset to factory defaults. And that is an important step to start with at first. Axis Camera Companion won't address a camera that already has a storage recording profile to perhaps another recording device or another NVR or PC or uh, any type of other or other methods. So I always suggest that you uh, reset those. Uh, and when we go through the um, you know, user interface of Access Camera Companion, I'll kind of explain all the moving parts. But everything's been turned on uh, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to reposition the camera real quick. So here we have Access Camera Companion running. When you first run it, it'll ask you to create a default site and password. So I'm going to go ahead and call this dem demo. Uh, and we'll just use a password, and I'll name it password for the sake of this. Obviously, you'd want a better password than that. And we'll go ahead and press next. It's going to tell you to connect the cameras. This step we've already done. So we can go ahead and just press next again. And it'll go out and find all of the cameras on the network. Again, it'll only find cameras that do not have an existing uh, recording profile to another storage device. So that's why resetting them to defaults uh, is important. If you get to this step and you cannot find any cameras, it means that the cameras are, are either configured to record somewhere else or you have a, a wiring problem or, or some other problem. So if you, if you can't get the cameras to appear here, uh, revisit your uh, network setup and make sure that they're reset to defaults. Um, so here we see all of the uh, cameras are checked. You could actually uncheck them if, for instance, you wanted to just use these two cameras with this NVR and perhaps those other two cameras for another project or another site. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, and use all four because uh, most people will, will want to use all of them. And we'll press next again. And at this point it's just touching, uh, reaching out to the cameras and determining uh, that they're there. And what we're going to want to do is set up this network share. And this is what's going to allow us to go to the NVR product. So when we press Connect Network Share, uh, it'll go out on the network and it'll find any uh, Buffalo NVR product. Here we have our Link Station NVR. Uh, it's the only one on the list. That's a good thing. Go ahead and select it. We'll press Next. It's going to ask for the username and password of the NVR product. Uh, since this is in default settings, it will be admin and password. But if you have changed that in a previous step, such as gone into it and given it a different administrator password, you'll want to enter it there. Um, you can still change it after this, which is something I would recommend you do anyways. We'll go ahead and press next. It's going to find any share that's on there. Uh, I have a default access share on mine, so that's where we're going to uh, select to record. But in case you uh, pre-configured this with other shares, you would see them all there. Uh, now it's testing the network share, and this is where the automatic um, technology really works between the Axis and the Buffalo units. Um, so what it's doing now is actually pre-populating users for each camera and, and selecting and, and creating perfectly uh, sized quotas for each of these cameras. Now what used to be an administratively burdened uh, 
administrative burden before. Uh, with this, it's all automatic. There's no chance to mess it up. There's no chance to, um, you know, forget the password. Uh, and it basically says now the network share has been set up for the cameras. Uh, it's just basically telling us where the cameras are going to go. So we press next again and it's just giving us a summary of what's going to happen. So at this point, these four cameras are all going to record to that access share. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. The quotas are set, set up, the usernames are set up. That's really what's nice about this. So actually my next option is just finish here. I'll go ahead and press finish and now it says installing cameras. So at this point the solution is going out and actually telling the cameras exactly how to uh, record to the storage, how to access their, their specific quota. And that's really the automatic part. If, uh, if I didn't have this, I would have had to be bouncing back and forth between the user interface of uh, the NVR as well as the user interface of Access Camera Companion and doing a lot of uh, manual calculation. And we've, we've taken all that hard work out. So as you can see, right now it's jumped right into live view. So I have all four cameras. Sorry, they're all sort of pointing in the same direction there. I have all four cameras. They are actively recording now. So basically this site is set up. Um, from now, I can just go into the gear wheel here, which is sort of where the administrative setup is. I can see, you know, the default recording profile is 14 days of motion detection uh, at max resolution, 15 frames per second. If I want to change that, I can just really quickly click on any of these, go into motion recording, and you know, if I want to bump up to max frame rate, I can do that. Which on this camera is probably about 30. If I want to have audio enabled, I can just check the audio button. Uh, and you can do you know numerous steps at a time. Like if I want audio on all of these, I can just press audio, and it's going out to the cameras and setting that up. Um, I can do multiple things at the same time. Uh, just to prove that recording's going on, there, we're not we're recording on motion, so uh, we really shouldn't see anything uh, in this. But uh, if we go over to uh, right now, it looks like one of these cameras just has picked up some motion. Uh, I'll go ahead and just move this one around. That should should. Uh, bring some motion. So I'll just uh, refresh it again and we'll actually be able to see that motion. And you can see this one now has a red mark here. So if I kind of scroll in on my, my timeline here, I can uh, see it more granularly. So if I click on that camera and press the play button, it'll go out and actually play that uh, the scene. So we're going to see the camera move in, uh, in a moment. And I can speed this up and um, cut things out and you know ultimately take that clip and you know, edge it in, edge it out and save it uh, and it'll save it to a downloads directory. But that's pretty much it. Um, from in, inside of here you can actually see the cameras again, uh, see their basic information and if you actually go to the storage tab it'll, it'll show you what the quota is, what that username is and all that was set up automatically so there's no use, uh, no error, human error uh, possibility or anything like that. Uh, and if you did want to change the number of days to record, uh, if you hit max here, then because this is a one usable terabyte unit, um, it's rounded down a little bit, uh, it will basically start to delete footage when you get close to 0.2 terabytes, which is 200 gigs. Click that, uh, and that's just about it. So again, uh, if, if you can't see the cameras, I would highly recommend uh, resetting them and, and verifying your, um, your setup here. If you've used the NVR before, it might be worthwhile to log in there and, and delete any existing camera users and delete any data that's on there so that new quotas can be set up appropriately. But that's how you set up Access Camera Companion with a Buffalo Link Station or Terror Station NVR.